If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this brief video demonstration, we're going to take a look at using 802.1x to secure the AP wired ports. Let's take a look. So here we are. We are logged into Smart Zone. We are going to do these configurations from Smart Zone. So again, what we are looking to accomplish is to secure our secondary AP ports or our AP wired ports with 802.1x. Um, you can see that in this particular instance, I have two APs that are being managed. Um, and the AP that I am particularly interested in is the Ruckus R510. This does have two ports. I'm looking to secure the secondary port on that R510 using 802.1x. The first thing that I have, have to do is create a ethernet port profile. Uh, that can be done under services, tunnels and ports, ethernet port. So um, I'm going to create an ethernet port here. I need, or I'm sorry, an ethernet port profile. Uh, I need to specify which zone this is going to reside under. So it would be available to any APs in that zone. The AP that I want to apply this to is under Team XX zone. So that's where I'm going to create this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click create here. And I am going to just name it generically 802.1x. And we're going to actually make this a general port. Oh man, I, okay, here we go. Yep, couldn't see uh, what I was typing there with that in the way. So it's just gonna be an 802.1x general port. And what I mean by that is you can specify which type of port you want this to be. Uh, a trunk port is going to allow all tagged VLANs. An access port is going to allow one untagged VLAN. A general port will allow one untagged VLAN and up to 20 tagged VLANs. So in this case, I'm just going to choose a general port here uh, for this particular uh, scenario. And you can see when you flip around all the different options, it changes what the VLAN options are under here. So uh, the next section that we're going to focus on is the authentication options. So again, the whole purpose of setting this up is I want to enable 802.1x. So I'm going to flip this to on. When I do that, um, it does give me an option for the 802.1x role. And in this case, uh, port-based authenticator is the only uh, option for the general port type. If I was selecting a different port type, I could do Mac-based authenticator or even supplicant. Um, but for general port, port-based authenticator is the only option that uh, I am afforded. Uh, the next section that we want to take a look at authentication and accounting. So this is which uh, which authentication server are we going to use um, for for this 802.1x request. Um, it's already got my non-proxy radius server listed here. So team XX zone is my non-proxied option and that is the one that I want to use for this demo. If I wanted a proxied option I could switch this to on and it would show um, any proxied servers that you have set. But again I want to use non-proxy so I'm going to leave this off. Uh, I am going to toggle on enable MAC authentication bypass. So this is using the device MAC address uh, as the username and password. So any system that I plug into this secondary port, it's going to use the MAC address of that system to authenticate it. So what that means is you've got to make sure that uh, whatever authentication server you have configured um, has the username and password or MAC address, I'm sorry, set up as a username and password for any devices that you're looking to plug in. So that backend work has already been done. I have that configured. So I'm enabling that. Um, VLAN options. So again, based on which port type you choose, you're going to have different port options. So again, for general ports, I can do one untagged VLAN and I can do 20 different tag VLANs. Um, in this case, my network's flat. I'm not, I don't need to specify additional tag VLANs, so I'm just leaving this as one. Uh, and then finally, you've got some options for uh, how the APs NAS is kind of configured. It's going to go off of the AP MAC and it's going to use a dash delimiter uh, by default. If you wanted to define that as something else and use col or use colons instead, depending on what your radius server is able to handle, you can you can change those here. So I've got everything that I need to have set. I am going to go ahead and choose OK. 
All right, now that this has been created, um, the next thing that I want to do is kind of get it ready to apply to an AP. So I'm going to go back under network and I'm going to go under access points and we're going to go back to where we were. Um, at this point, what I want to do is I want to bring up a, um, a look into the other PC that I'm using here. So the PC that's plugged into the R510. So if I bring that up here, we can see that on Ethernet, uh, Ethernet 3 is the active uh, Ethernet port on this system. Uh, I have a continuous ping to a uh, Google DNS server running here, and we're seeing we're getting replies. So we're traversing that port. We're getting out to the Internet. That's what we're expecting to see. And I do have a notepad here, just the uh, MAC address of this particular system, which I'm going to use as the username and password to authenticate it with 802.1x when that time comes. But um, I have nothing applied, so switching back to smart zone I have nothing applied to that port that 510 secondary port in terms of a profile um, it's got the default WAN profile on it now that's why it's able to work but once we switch that profile for the one that we just created um, we're gonna have to do some things on that other machine to get it to uh, actually pass traffic and get that ping res uh, restored so I am going to make this um, change the Ethernet port profile change under the zone level if I wanted to specify this just to that AP uh, I certainly could do that but when I apply it to the zone level it's gonna make sure that it applies to any R510s that end up falling under this zone so if you want to make changes and enable 802.1x for all your APs apply it at the zone level and you can get that done so we're actually looking at doing this under the AP model specific configuration so again we said this was an R510 so I need to select the R510 from the drop down list here uh, scrolling down we can see the port settings. You can see that both LAN interfaces are on. Both of them are default trunk WAN ports. This is why that machine is currently responding to ping. Um, but what I want to do is I want to change this LAN to port. We want to change the profile here. So if we select the drop down, we can see the port profile that we created, 802.1x general. So what I need to do is select that and choose OK to apply it to the zone, which will then push that configuration out to the APs. So I'll wait a few seconds for this to happen, but ultimately what we should see uh, when we look back at the um, PC that is doing that ping, um, it should fail. So we'll give it a few seconds and we'll come back and we will take a look. And as we can see, that PC has already started failing. It, did, it was pretty quick. Uh, it is no longer able to uh, access the 8.8.8.8 so it is timing out. Um, what we need to do is enable this uh, system for 802.1x so um, in an enterprise this is likely already done with policy um, on, on this lab environment I had to turn on a service but um, when you right click on the particular connection that you're needing to enable it on you can go into properties um, click on authentication and you can enable triple E uh, 802.1x IEEE authentication here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you can see right away it is saying hey uh, we need you to log in okay no problem I've got the MAC address that I had specified that I wanted to use uh, which is the MAC address of this particular machine I'm going to enter that as the username and password and choose OK so it should take just a second and it's already connected back up so this machine connected into that second LAN port on that AP just past 802.1x authentication. So without being authenticated, we're not getting anywhere. It's in a controlled state. It's restricted. But as soon as we're able to authenticate that port back to the radius server, we get full control of that port. And we're able to route out to the Internet. So that is that is exactly what we were looking to accomplish in this particular scenario if we go under monitor we can look at AP wired clients and we should see this guy uh, as an authorized yep as an authorized client here so that's uh, that's the quick demo that we wanted to show today hopefully you found that useful hopefully um, you can understand what the port profile is doing here and use that to secure your secondary ports on your devices. Thanks for watching and we hope that you join us for future demo videos.